Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante. This is The Cube, and we're at IBM Edge 2015, our fourth year at IBM Edge. We're here in Las Vegas at the Sands. Alex Chen is here, he's a business line executive for XIV, and Oscar Lavina is a project manager at IT Now, a service provider in Barcelona. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you. you. Great Pleasure to see to you. So, uh, well, let me start with you, uh, Oscar. So, first trip to Edge, or have you been to other Edges no, before? No, it's first time here. First time, what do you think? What do you make of That's the. That's great, great session. Good, great a lot of people. audience, right? I mean, oh, yeah. content is good, meeting mm -hmm. some peers. You come to a lot of these shows, and how do you, you know, put, put Edge into context from an IT practitioner's perspective? Well, as a customer, I mean, it's great to be here because you, you know, you, you got a lot of new announcements, you got a lot of, you know, news from IBM, new products, so you get in touch with some other people, and you know, you can share your problems, your daily problems with them, and you know how to solve them. So that's pretty fun, pretty cool. So Alex, you know, yes. XIV's had a very interesting history. You know, small Israeli company, That's right. very little revenue. IBM paid, in retrospect, uh, a rather low price comparative yeah. to some of the other virtualization array companies that got right, acquired. Right. If I recall, it was around 350 million. We've seen exits of two billion plus, 2.5 billion, you know, billion eight. Uh, so you got a you got a good deal from that standpoint. Assuming you could ramp the product and put it into your you know your revenue stream, yeah. which you've done. You know, it's been years now that you guys have, have made that transition and a very successful one. But give us the update now on XIV. What's the status? Certainly, certainly. So XIV, you know, as the um, as exists today, is our, you know, one of our premier cloud offerings. As you all know, that uh, XIV users loves, you know, once you kind of gone XIV, you don't go back because of the simplicity, uh, the grid scale, easy to manage, easy to scale, um, and easy to deploy. Um, and efficiency as well come with the Energy Start uh, cert certification. Um, the high density comes with it. Um, last year, towards the end of the year, we upgraded the capacity of XIV to be about uh, half a petabyte in a single rack. Um, and this year, um, we are currently we announced today the availability of um, real-time compression integrated with the grid architecture. And with that real-time compression, we can hold more than two petabytes of storage in a single rack, and also reduce the total cost of energy uh, of ownership significantly. Further sets us apart in the enterprise storage space. Yeah. So, XIV. I think of XIV. The architecture it spreads data out. Correct. Right. So, and it's used. Um, High density, high capacity SATA devices, so yes. low driving costs down. <laughs> that was always the sort of yep. ethos of, of XIV. Uh, so, how, Oscar, tell us your story of XIV. What was life before XIV, and why'd you bring it in, and what are you doing with it? Well, uh, it was back in two, 2012, and we, you know, we need uh, a new storage solution that, as uh, Alex mentioned, it was easy to manage. It got a lot of performance and you know a lot of capacity with a you know very little footprint is when XIV came into place so we did test it and and we love it for for the very first moment so we are building our private cloud relying on XIV so far we have like uh, almost six petabytes of storage alone I mean only on XIV and it's, it's running running really really good one thing uh, I like the most of XIV is it's you know consistent performance, so no matter how hard you know applications try yeah. to you know write or read <coughs> data out of the box, I mean uh, response times you know doesn't keep bouncing up and down, up and down. So for us, uh, you know, uh, for me as a, as a storage manager, uh, XAV makes my life much easier. So can you describe that a little bit further? Add some color to that. I mean. In what sense, what was life like before, what was like like after, and how do you quantify that? Well, the big difference probably is that uh, before you had to do like a lot of tuning on your storage, you know, to, to, yeah. to survive to the applications. And right now, I mean, we have a capacity, we put different workloads on an XAV, and, and you, you forget about it. So it's, it's quite 
simple in that sense. So tuning was a, a big chunk of your time prior yes. to, you know, I think of arms and legs. You spent uh, left leg, <coughs> left arm, right arm, doing yeah. tuning. tuning. What percent of your time, roughly, did you spend on tuning then versus now? Would you well, say? it depends on the week, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Maybe take it in like a 12-month chunk. You know? <laughs> I know it's a hard question because it varies, right? And you're putting mm -hmm. out fires, but... But probably it was like 10, 15% of my time. Okay. And now it's barely, you know, close to zero. It's because, zero, okay. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. gained 10 or 15% of your time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Tuning's never that fun. Because, you, know? oh, you, yeah. you know, you're never going to get it right permanently. Mm -hmm. So what other, what other, so I mean, basically, if I understand it, XIV made your life easier, simplified, what else would you spend time doing that you don't spend time doing now? Well, uh, management, uh, I mean, managing the box is something that it's really easy. It, it's got a, a nice mm -hmm. graphical interface, so you can just, you know, map new volumes in, in barely a few seconds. So deploying capacity, um, Moving stuff around. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, servicing applications. You mentioned performance tuning. Mm -hmm. uh, so so adding capacity. So so if you think about that pie chart of where you spent your time, mm -hmm. um, how, how much of your time got freed up? You mentioned ten to fifteen percent on tuning. What about other sort of mundane, non-revenue producing tasks? Uh, you know, how much more time did you gain percentage-wise? Well, it's hard to tell, but I would say. Like, 25, 30 percent. Really? Yeah. yeah so yeah. Th that including the performance tuning. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Yeah. So a third, almost a third of your time is, is essentially freed up now because of XIV. What do you do with that time? Some of the things. Yeah, but like what? You know? Like come to Edge. You yeah. come to Edge. Okay. <laughs> oh, you come to Vegas with your time. That's okay. right. <laughs> yeah, thinking <laughs> about you know thinking about new solutions. Uh -huh. Asking Alex, you know, to bring new features right. to XIV. You know. Okay. Okay, and and so. Speaking of new features, real-time compression's the newest feature. That's right. And that's brand new. You don't have that installed yet, or do you actually have a... We, we are beta testing, actually. You are, okay. Mm -hmm. How's that work? If I'm a customer of XIV, and I'm not right. a beta customer, <coughs> how do I get real-time compression? Do I flick a switch? Is that a software update? Yeah. Is there a yeah, 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 is yeah. It, is yeah. it a full <coughs> You charge for it's that? Um, right? Well, so first of all, real-time compression is released in a Gen, Gen 3 code. So all models of Gen 3 or you, you just up to upgrade the code and you get real time compression. You get you you get a forty five day free li trial license. So anybody, you know, there's no key enabled. You accept the license. You get a for, you go to this website that you go to. You get a forty five day trial license. You and what's what's really good about it is that in this forty five days you'll get a very good understanding of how much capacity you'll save, because inside of XIV GUI, XIV GUI integrated is by LUN how much capacity you can save if you enable that uh, compression with one click a button and how much capacity you have saved by, into, by enabling the compression. So, so again, a clients, all Gen 3 clients on their existing system upgrade their microcode, get the real-time compression, get the 45-day trial, go start using it and see the benefit of it. Now, it is a license, it is a separately purchased uh, because it's capacity related, it is for a very reasonable price. You can purchase uh, real time compression on the existing systems. Now, we are also announcing for a limited time only because we're trying to get as much clients to use the real time compression as possible, at least in North America and we'll down the road look at the worldwide as well for new systems that are purchased between now and end of September. So until end of 3Q, you get free free real-time compression and a subscription for a year. For a free year? For a year. Well, after okay. that, it's software MA, but you get the perpetual license, sort of speak, the upfront cost, one-time license charge. Okay, so the, the, free. the business case, the value proposition is less storage required, you get you know, some kind of compression Absolutely. factor. Right. What have you seen uh, so far in, in beta? Is it too early to tell, or can you share with us some early results? Yeah, I mean, we... Uh, Testing actually is being, uh, has gone beyond expectations because you know we yeah. expect to have like a compression about you know 50, 60 percent, and we've been able to even compress data up to 93 percent. You know, we want some. So some it's essentially doubling your capacity almost. Oh, no, no, 93 percent is 93. more. It's, yeah, it's yeah. ten times. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh okay. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flip my numerator denominator. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So okay. So you're, yeah. you're seeing a 10x compression mm -hmm. ratio. Yeah. In average, it's probably like 70 percent in the world goes that we've test 
and as Alex mentioned, I mean, it's, it's, it's really easy to deploy. I mean, and what is really cool is that it tells you up front how much space you're gonna gain. So it tells you, you know, which volumes it's worth, you know, to compress them, yep. or which volumes are not worth to compress them. And right. uh, for a capacity point of view, in a company as, as mine, that we double this amount of storage every three years, so you can imagine the amount of storage that you can, you know, save using compression. So it's very, very promising. Are you charging him 10 times more? No, absolutely <laughs> not. See, this is, we're bringing a lot of value into this enterprise platform that's already better than 5.9 availability, have you know, all the enterprise functions and features. Now, just imagine, stop paying for you know, the you know, several dollars per gigabyte price of capacity by just buying the software innovation that's available on all Gen 3 machines. Uh, so, uh, we're getting close to our time, but I wanted yep. to ask about um, Software defined and spectrum. Absolutely. Essentially, the S XIV code has been extracted and is part of fundamental part of your yep. your spectrum offering. How's that going? You know, what do you think about? Um, I'm interested in what Oscar thinks about uh, uh, software defined. But give us the update on that. Well, so uh, as you know, we uh, we launched software defined for spectrum accelerate in one Q at G eight in in March, um, and it is uh, you know we extracted the software out of XIV so that it's available to run on any virtual machine with a, uh, a recommended hardware configuration. Um, a lot of our clients see a lot of value in, in these uh, use cases in, um, in development tests, um, in remote, and some are in disaster recovery. They're looking at uh, perhaps leveraging Spectrum Accelerate for a lower cost of uh, a DR solution. But I think the predominant use case is for people who wants to build private clouds or public cloud infrastructure for, uh, for MSP. Mm -hmm. Because these are the folks that has the engineering knowledge and has the, um, the, uh, the, the hardware capacity. They j they don't, they're just looking at acquiring the, the software and the intellectual property in the so software form factor so they can apply to their existing infrastructure. Those are the, those are the clients that are going to you know, see the most uh, uh, benefit from this offering. So this you're offering. a service provider, does that appeal to you? Is that something that you're looking at? Or are you sort of happy with yeah, the current definitely. situation? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're looking always for new solutions. And I'm here at Edge, so I'm uh -huh. looking forward you know, to get a lot of yes. know knowledge on, on software defined. And I have a 45-day trial version, USB, hand it to him Alex, and 200 good, other clients. Good freebies you're giving away Exactly, here yeah, exactly. Come to Edge, get some, get yes, some good exactly. from IBM. Um, but okay, but so it's more than just sort of a industry buzzword to you, Oscar. It's something you're seriously looking at. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it gives you more flexibility, better cost, combination. What, I, I believe it's going to give us more flexibility, moving data around. It's one of the biggest problem, you know. Yeah. To get stuck in, you know, an array, so you have to move data around. You talked before about how much time do you spend doing something, and probably you know, m moving data around from one solution to another solution is. It was quite of a time that we've yeah. been spending. And the bigger it gets, the slower it gets when you start moving around. <laughs> All right, we're getting this time, we have to go. Okay. Uh, Alex and Oxford, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It was really a pleasure. Thank you, Welcome. appreciate it. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Edge 2015 in Las Vegas. Right back. <laughs>